Welcome to the second episode of Parent Quick Smarts, Grade 3, Unit 2. In this unit, your child will begin by building a conceptual understanding of multiplication and division. They will create models and pictures to represent the situations or actions taking place in word problems, and your child will also be exposed to a variety of different strategies to do this. Students will gain an understanding of multiplication through problem solving. Carter was buying drinks for a party. He bought five packs of juice. Each pack contained six juice boxes. How many juice boxes did he buy? As we look at this problem, Carter is buying packs of juice. We can represent each pack of juice by drawing a circle. Students should label their drawings to make sure their picture directly matches the problem. To represent the juice boxes in each pack, I can put six circles in a pack. Now I need to continue putting six juice boxes in each of the five packs. This will help me determine how many juice boxes Carter bought. I don't want to forget to label the juice boxes. As adults, we would have immediately jumped to solve this problem using 5 times 6 equals 30. In order to learn this conceptually, your third grader will begin by saying this as 5 groups of 6 is 30. Your child might look at their model of this problem as 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 equals 30. This strategy is repeated addition. Repeated addition will help students understand the meaning of multiplication. Another strategy students will be exposed to is using number lines. When using a number line, students can often get to an incorrect solution because they count the hash marks rather than the spaces or intervals on the number line. Let's look at this problem on the number line. I know one pack of juice has six boxes. I can continue until I've made five jumps of six because there are five packs of juice with six boxes in each pack. This also models the total number of juice boxes Carter bought, 30. Looking at the same problem, a student may choose to solve it using yet another strategy. First, using a color tile to represent each of the five packs of juice, then using a tile to represent each of the six boxes of juice in each pack. They would continue with this model until all five packs have six juice boxes represented. Now looking at this model, you should see five rows which represent the five packs of juice and six columns which represent six juice boxes per pack. This is called an array. Students may write five rows of six is the same as 30 to get to the solution of this problem, or five times six equals 30. It is important that students can clearly explain what each number represents in their model and how it correlates to the problem. When you hear the terms multiplication and division, your mind may take you back to your days in school and those endless hours of flashcards and time tests. However, this is not what we want our students to experience. At this point, we want our students to develop an understanding of multiplication and division, not just recall facts. Flashcards will not give your child understanding of multiplication necessary for problem solving. Let's look at this new problem. Wilma bought silly bands for her slumber party. She bought 18 silly bands and wants to share them equally among herself and five friends. How many silly bands will each person get? Think about how to represent this situation with manipulatives or a quick picture. First, I need to represent the 18 silly bands to share equally. Next, I need to show the people or groups that I will sh share the silly bands with. This circle will represent Wilma and then her five friends. So knowing that the yellow circles represent the silly bands and the red ovals represent the people, I need to share them equally among the six people. As a reminder, labeling my picture or model is best so that I have a true understanding of what each part represents. The small yellow circles represent one of my 18 silly bands, and each red oval represents the people or groups that the silly bands need to be shared among. 
You may also represent it in an equation, 18 divided by 6 equals 3, or your child may even use the word form, 18 silly bands shared equally among 6 friends gives each friend 3 silly bands. Now let's look at how we can use a number line for a division situation. I would want to locate or start with the total number of silly bands that I have, 18. Now I need to represent each person. There are six friends that will get a silly band as I pass them out or share them equally each time. I will continue to pass out or share a group of six until I have no more. I can pass out groups of six silly bands a total of three times until I have none left. Looking at this model, it shows 18 silly bands being shared in groups of six, a total of three jumps or three silly bands per friend. Your child might make a connection from the number line to repeated subtraction. There are two ways your child can correctly represent this. 18 minus 6 minus 6 minus 6 equals 0. This way can be confusing to students because they cannot see how many are left each time they are subtracting 6. By displaying the repeated subtraction vertically, your child can see how much is left and then show their continued repeated subtraction until they get to 0. It is very important for students to continue their repeated subtraction until they get to 0 or until the number can no longer be subtracted. Now they can go back and identify how many times they repeatedly subtracted 6. You can see here 6 was subtracted a total of 3 times. This model, too, shows the action or situation that is occurring in the problem. So 18 divided by 6 equals 3. As with multiplication, arrays could also be a strategy your child chooses to use in a division situation. A difference with this problem is the total number of items is given, 18 silly bands, as well as the total number of groups, the six friends. Because we know the number of groups, I can use this to represent the rows in my array. Now that I have six rows, I will continue to fill each row until all 18 silly bands have been shared equally. Here is the equation that relates to the model. 18 split into 6 equal rows gives you 6 rows of 3. All of the strategies you've seen in this video are a part of the 3rd grade Florida content standards. Here are examples of a few of them. Here is a 3rd grade sample assessment question. Quinn helps his dad make 24 blueberry muffins and 32 carrot muffins. They divide the muffins equally among seven baskets. Write an equation using M for the total number of muffins. Solve to find how many muffins they placed in each basket. If you notice, there is more than one operation required to solve this problem. This is why we have focused this unit on understanding the action situations in a problem. This leads children to having a conceptual understanding of multiplication and division. Here are some questions that could help deepen your child's conceptual understanding of multiplication and division. What are the actions in the problem? How can you model that? How can you relate the parts of your model to the parts of the problem? Does your expression or equation match the problem? Solve this problem using a different strategy. Write a word problem to match a given equation or to match a given model. Here are some examples of manipulatives that you may have around the house. These could be used to help your child model problems they bring home or math problems you create. Here are some examples of multiplication division in the real world. Spend time with your child looking for these connections and solving problems based on them. Egg cartons, I have equal rows. So if I have three equal rows of six eggs, how many eggs do I have? Equal groups, I have three tennis balls in a can. I have four cans. How many tennis balls do I have? Or are you really saving money? So whenever you're shopping, looking for better deals. Remember to keep in communication with your child's teacher on what your child is working on. Resources to give you an idea of what your child is learning include Think Central and the elementary math website listed on this slide. Thank you and see you next episode.